Now we've established why an OSPF neighbor might not come up and we've gone through a few basic methods on troubleshooting OSPF adjacencies. Let's now take a look at the OSPF network types on the Nokia Alcatel Lucent platform. On the Nokia 7750s, it's actually rather simple because there's only two OSPF network types, point to point and broadcast. The point to point network type always connects just two neighbors and is the default option for serial connections. Because of this, there is no need for a DR BDR election and all OSPF packets are sent to the all SPF routers multicast address. This is 224.0.0.5. But because this is a point-to-point -point network, when the packet is sent out of the router interface, it has nowhere to go except the router at the other end. Broadcast access networks are when more than two devices can connect to the network and packets sent by one device can be seen by all connected devices. OSPF actually uses multicast rather than broadcast for sending messages. 224.0.0.5 to send information to all OSPF routers and 224.0.0.6 to send information to the designated router and backup designated router. A designated router is always elected on a broadcast network. On the Nokia 7750 for an Ethernet interface, it's broadcast by default because the device is expecting it to be connected to a LAN. So let's have a look at this. Show router OSPF interface detail. And we can see that the network type is broadcast. Now, if we were going to change this, what we'd have to do, we'd have to do this under the OSPF context. Interface type, and we will change it to point to point. We can now see that the interface type has changed to point to point and on point to point links there is no designated router but we've actually probably run into a bit of a problem here because now if I run onto if I jump onto R2 the adjacency has gone down because this router will be stuck in init state and init state is where it's received its neighbors hello but it will never transition into a full state because this router here is still running on broadcast network type and its neighbor is on the point to point network type so this is something that we need to look into um, if you ever see it stuck into init state along with some change in the MTU also if the interface types are different this can also cause a route to be stuck in the init state and with OSPF loopback interfaces these are automatically configured as passive and this informs OSPF not to send any hello packets on the interface. This can also be checked under the OSPF context with area 12 interface loopback. And if I run an info detail command, we can see that this is automatically configured as being passive. Consider the following topology. We have R1, R2, R3 and R4 all connected by a switch on a multimedia access network. Now in Alcatel Lucent terminology, there are only two network types. There are broadcast networks and point to point networks. 
and the OSPF DRBDR election is only formed on the broadcast network type. Now if all OSPF routers were to form adjacencies with every other router on a broadcast network, the formula is n times n minus 1 divided by 2 links with LSAs being sent across each of those links. So if we add that formula to the network that we have, we would have 4 times and then 4 minus 1 which is 3, 4 times 3 equals 12 and then 12 divided by 2. For the 4 routers there were 6 links. Now on our small network of 4 routers with each neighbour synchronising its database and each router then flooding those LSAs to all its adjacent neighbours and each of those neighbours would also flood the LSAs to their neighbours then we can see that we have quite a number of LSAs. But let's see what happens when we increase the number of routers within the area, one router at a time. Now for simplicity's sake and only for the diagram we will only show one set of flooding but bear in mind that this would be replicated many many times. With 5 routers the number of links increases to 10 and we can already see that the number of LSAs has increased significantly. With 6 routers the number of links increases to 15 and with 7 routers the number of links now increases to 21. Now we get an idea of the number of LSAs that could be increasing across a network with each additional router which is added to the topology. And remember this is just in one direction. In a real network situation each router would then propagate those same hellos onto each of their neighbours potentially resulting in a massive amount of LSAs sent for each link change. So what do we do about that? To significantly reduce network traffic on a broadcast network the routers elect a designated router which is called a DR and a backup designated router which is the BDR. All other routers are called other designated routers. The other routers only need to form adjacencies with the DR and BDR which is a backup of the designated router as opposed to every other router in the area. The DR then sends updates to every router on the shared network segment. If the DR goes down or fails then the BDR is ready to take over and another alternative router will take the place of the BDR ready to take the role of the DR in case it fails. So imagine the scenario you're a network architect or a sysadmin and your boss comes to you and he says listen we're running OSPF in the network and um, we found a couple of issues on two of the routers we want to make sure that those routers never ever become the designated routers or the backup designated routers. Let's say for example we want R1 to be the designated router always but if R1 has an issue R3 should be the backup designated router. Now R2 and R4 should never become the either the designated router or the backup designated router. How are we going to do that? Let's have a quick look at the topology we're going to be working with. These are the four routers. Now R1 will be the designated router and R3 will be the backup designated router and R2 and R4 won't even partake. So I'll span up two extra devices. I have one, two, three and four. Um, I've done the basic interface configuration so R1 should be able to ping the other devices. which it can, dot two, dot three, and dot four, and let's ping ourselves just to make sure, good. In this situation, um, there's no OSPF actually configured at the moment on any of them. I've just done the base configuration so I'll take you through the entire OSPF configuration. So the first thing I'm going to do is configure router OSPF area 124 interface. Now this is R1 so on R1 I'm going to set it to the maximum priority which is 255. 
that's all I should have to do and do the same on the others R2 the priority is zero quickly show router OSPF interface it's an other designated router which is good which is what we want to see I'm looking over here for that here I can see the router status and this says ODR which means other designated router let's continue to R3 It can have any priority. Now, the default priority is one, but I will make it two. And I will do the same on R4. Now on R4, I'm going to take a bit of a pause here. And the reason I'm taking a pause is because I'm hoping it forms an adjacency. And the only reason I want to do with this is that I want to show you guys that there's no preemption on OSPF. Preemption is basically if it's already formed an adjacency or a neighborship and you change the priority, you will have to actually shut down the OSPF process and then bring it back up for the changes to take effect. Okay, it is an other designated router because already the backup designated router has taken effect. Now the boss's stipulation was that even if one of the other routers, the designated router or the backup designated goes down, R2 or R4 shouldn't actually take over. Let me just go on to R3 and shut down the OSPF process. And now when I jump back over to R4, you can see that R4 has become the backup designated router. This is because we haven't set the priority to zero. By setting the priority to zero in OSPF, it means that the router is not even eligible to be either be the designated router or backup designated router. So let me do that now. and we see that it's transitioned to the other designated router it is no longer eligible to take part in the designated router or backup designated router process